Hey, how's it going? I wanted to make a quick video about the Sony A7S III camera and my first experience with using it for skateboarding. I've been filming skateboarding for a long time and I have used this, which is the Sony FS700 for probably the last six years. The A7S III came out and I got instantly super enthused about it and I actually pre-ordered one back in September. Still haven't got it yet. But Sony was nice enough to send me one that I could use for a few days and we actually had a shoot planned up in San Francisco for Santa Cruz Skateboards. So I was like, you know what, let's use this camera on this shoot. Here is some footage from the actual shoot. My plan for this shoot was to only use the A7S III for some vlog stuff here and there and not to really use it for any of the skate stuff. But once I started shooting with it, I liked it so much and I felt comfortable enough with it that I didn't take my other camera out of the bag the entire trip. I've done a little bit of color grading and a touch of stabilization in the footage you're seeing here because we did our first episode of the vlog from this trip on the Santa Cruz Skateboards YouTube channel and as we normally do with vlogs, we didn't do a whole lot of post-production on it. It elicited a lot of responses about the shakiness of the footage and some of the color grading and stuff like that. So I just wanted to show what this footage actually looks like when you put a little bit of work into it. So we're not judging it from a vlog which is meant to be very rough and raw and uses a lot of the shots that you normally wouldn't use in a more polished cut. First off, I did not use a microphone on the camera. I just used it as is because I have this Sony shotgun mic that I purchased to use with the Sony A7S III. The mic actually arrived way before the camera, but I didn't use it on the shoot because I realized pretty quickly I would need a handle and if I was able to get any sort of good fisheye shots with the camera. I borrowed the Easy Handle V2 from my buddy Brendan Bill and the way that this handle mounts onto the camera, it wouldn't let me use the hot shoe that is required to use this microphone. So I was like, you know what, handle, no good audio, or good audio, and I can't really use the camera for what I want to use it for because I don't have a handle. So went with the handle, and to be honest with you, the internal mic on the camera turned out to be way better than I thought it would. There's a couple situations where it was super windy, That didn't really turn out so well. But even on like dialogue, because you know it was a lot of on the fly interview type stuff, a lot of the dialogue actually came out pretty good. Where are we going, Piz? Hit these streets, dog. Downtown, San Francisco. So that was cool, but I know that pairing it with a shotgun mic like this or this Sennheiser lab that I'm using right now with my FS700 to record audio, that's gonna get us way better audio, obviously. Also, I wanted to note that I did not shoot in log because the nature of these vlogs is like plug and play like i hand them to our editor trevor he cuts them up super raw we don't put a whole lot of thought into them let's just get them out there you know and so i'm really looking forward to getting this camera which i think i'm gonna get tomorrow and using it with some s log and really trying to dial in the settings and i think it's i think it's gonna be dope because even with just shooting it just standard, I think it was Rex, Rex 709 that I was shooting, just a basic color profile. I found with just a little bit of like curves adjustments um, and just a little little bit of tweaks here and there in Lumetri in Premiere, I was able to get the footage to look pretty good. And I was stoked on that. Like I said, using this camera, I really did not plan to use it for as much as I did, but I liked it so much and I felt comfortable enough with it that I was like, you know what, let's just go for it. The lightweight compared to what I normally use, which is this big FS700 kitted out, definitely made it harder to keep it steady. Especially the first day or two when I was really getting used to just how small and light this camera is, using it with this handle. And also we were skating like pretty rough like brick spots at first. So 
I think that's something that just maybe adding a little bit of weight to the camera and just getting used to it is gonna really help. I did not use any sort of like image stabilization in camera because this camera actually has built into it a gyro stabilization system. You can actually use Catalyst Browse, which is a Sony app that you can basically pair with the camera and you can use the in-body gyro data to stabilize the clips. I haven't tried that yet. I'm looking forward to giving it a shot. But what I did do was just use Warp Stabilizer in Premiere at like a small percent of smoothness, just take the smoothness down from like 50 to like 10. And I felt like that actually really helped too. They also sent me a 12 to 24 millimeter fisheye. It's so really looking forward to trying that out. I tried it out at Soma Skate Park. Here's some footage of it. It's also in that vlog I mentioned on Santa Cruz Skateboard's YouTube channel. I thought this lens was pretty cool. It did kind of have that weird kind of, I don't even know, not anamorphic, but just kind of strange look to it that I wasn't really feeling. And you know, that also might just be some stuff that I needed to mess around with a little bit more, get the settings and get the focal length just dialed in perfectly. But for the rest of the shoot, I ended up just using this, which is my Canon eight to 15 millimeter fisheye that I normally use. And I felt like once I started using that lens, it kind of helped me get the results I was used to getting as well. I like to have a little bit of vignette when I do skate stuff, especially with Santa Cruz. It's just kind of like the look that we've been running with for a few years now actually longer than that but uh yeah it's uh some people hate it some people love it but i personally like it it reminds me of like old kind of vx1000 standard definition vibes and so that's why i run with that but i was able to achieve that same look with the sony a7s3 and my canon 8 to 15 millimeter one other thing i wanted to note was I was mostly shooting 1080 and 120p, which I've actually never had a camera that does 120p without slowing the footage down and taking out the audio. This camera, FS700, you can do 120 frames per second. You can even do 240 frames per second, super slow-mo with the uh, S and Q mode, but it automatically slows the footage down for you and you don't get the audio. Well, this Sony a7S III, you can actually shoot 120p and it just plays in normal motion and you have all your sound, but if you wanna slow it down in post, you can do that and it's really smooth and, and dope. So that's another thing I wanna play around with and kind of just try to figure out because like I said, I've never actually shot in 120p as like the native frame rate. And I was really just curious how that would all look. I know that from my just little tests trying to slow the footage down in post, it actually is pretty rad. So that's that's a cool feature to have, but I have a feeling that that's maybe something that I wouldn't do for most of my shots. Maybe just when I know it's gonna be something that I would like to have the option to slow down and stuff like that, but we'll see. One quick note on that, the a7S III also has S and Q mode, which is slow and quick mode for super slow-mo straight out of the camera without the audio. Here's some test shots that I tried out at 120 frames per second. <laughs> I almost ate it on this last one. All that being said, I'm really looking forward to getting the camera myself, going back out, trying some different settings, seeing what works best. I know it's a beast of a camera and uh, really excited about it. I will do some more videos on this once I get the camera and start to play around with it a little bit more. Let me know if there's anything about this camera with skateboarding or without skateboarding that you would like to know and I'll, I'll try to figure it out. But there's a lot of really good videos out there about the technical specs of this camera. Not really gonna get into that, but I will play with some different settings with skateboarding, without skateboarding, and put some, put some stuff up there for you to see. And I think um, it's gonna be really fun to dive into. Thank you again for tuning in and yeah, have a great day. Peace.